is Shelby Karam and I am nine years old and I collect cockroaches. I'm just a teenage dirtbag baby. Saw dudes, welcome back to the number one YouTube channel in the entire world. Today's a very special video because we are going to be talking about kids' strange obsessions. That's right, it is a spinoff of My Strange Addiction, but for children. I smell children. Marvelous. Now, even though I have no children of my own, I know that children's brains, they're like sponges. And sometimes kids get addicted to some weird stuff and get into some weird stuff. I know when I was a kid, I used to eat my boogers. Still do. They taste like chicken. But we're not talking about that today. We're talking about kids' weird obsessions or their strange addictions. Since we're looking at kids' strange obsessions, why don't we look at the girl first that is addicted to collecting cockroaches? evacuate the house, burn it to the ground. The whole thing needs to go. Are you kidding me with the amount of cockroaches underneath those sheets? This is, this is my worst nightmare, guys. I don't know if you guys can tell, but even though I'm an absolute alpha male, I am afraid of bugs, okay? That's my one thing. I'm really afraid of bugs and rats. If I see a rat, it's do or die. I'll make it the biggest deal ever. I can't just nonchalantly kill the rat. Me and the rat are gonna have a stare down for about 10 minutes. I'm gonna tell B to go get a mani pet. Do, do something, get out of the house. It's me, either I die or this thing dies. And that's how I feel with bugs too. When I see a spider or I see any kind of bug, all the air gets sucked out of the room. It's me, dual wielding flip flops, and it's near that or one of us is dying. Hi, my name is Shelby Counterman. I am nine years old and I collect cockroaches. She kissed the cockroach! Oh my god! Stop! Oh, hi! My name is Evelyn and I'm a digital to cockroach! Oh my god, dude! This is just one of those things you see when you just can't believe that this is a reality. I can't believe that the parents let this happen. This is the most irresponsible thing I've ever seen. I don't understand it. I don't know how a kid, maybe because kids don't have fear yet and they don't know any different. What balls this girl has to be able to pick up a cockroach and kiss it. I can never do that. Let me know what you guys think about this. I feel like as a parent, you can say no. You can say no. How is this allowed? So Shelby Counterman is from Oklahoma and she says that when she started collecting cockroaches, she only had a few and now she has thousands. So she has thousands of cockroaches living in her house and her parents are okay with this. I'm all about parents accepting the weird phases your kids go through. And there's always that thing where if you tell a kid no, that makes them want to do it more. But I feel like collecting cockroaches what kind of parent agrees to this? And this is just me thinking out loud here. Has Child Protective Services not come to the house yet? Like, where are you guys at? Are you guys doing your jobs? So it's revealed that Shelby's goal is to teach the world to not be afraid of cockroaches. And to this point, I just want to say, I think most people aren't afraid of cockroaches. They just think they're disgusting and they think that they need to be nuked, but they're nuke proof. Shelby's goal is a very ambitious one. I think I speak for everybody when I say cockroaches are absolutely disgusting. And if I had access to the house, I would burn this house to the ground, cockroaches included. It's baffling to me that this little girl can just pick up the cockroaches and they can be crawling all across her skin and she doesn't get tingled. She doesn't get weirded out. It's just normal for her. I like Roaches because when they crawl my arms, they tickle me, and when I hold them, they make me real happy. Uh, I could do without them, but she really likes them, so. I could do without them, but she really likes them. What's up with this dad? What a weirdo, huh? You're the parent. You have the right to say no in your old household. This guy has no balls. Yo, hate to break it to you, dad -o. You're not your kid's friend. You're your kid's parent, and you're allowing cockroaches in the house. You actually allow cockroaches to just run around your floors and everything. This is the strangest thing I've ever seen in my life. So Shelby's mother says, I don't love the cockroaches, but I can deal with them. I do have moments where I freak out. An example of when she freaks out is when her daughter accidentally lets the cockroaches out and there's little baby cockroaches all around the floor. There's cockroaches running around this entire house on everything and the food items and the pantry, they're just everywhere. And this is allowed in this household. But overall, you know, I've come to accept Shelby's passions. Let's give it up for today's video sponsor, Your Wet Sock, the number one YouTube channel in the world you should definitely go buy some your wet sock merch today while it's on sale the merch is guaranteed to look stylish on your body while at the same time making you smell like a winner and while you're at it you should go and join the your wet sock channel membership program because it is the best channel membership program you get custom videos from your favorite creator and it's a great way to support me in this channel shelby says her favorite thing about cockroaches is that they're unique and special and she has them crawling all over her shirt you know my favorite thing about cockroaches is guys when they stay away from me and i don't have to see them ever my favorite thing about cockroaches is that someday 
day in the near future that they will all go away. Hey dad, newsflash, these cockroaches can get out of your house whenever you say that they can get out of your house. It's a quick call to the bug guy to come over and spray and kill all these cockroaches. And then it's a phase and then your daughter's gonna be on to the next thing. I don't really understand this. I feel like this dad and this mom are a prisoner in their own household. This is the epitome of what happens when you give your kid control over the household. There's cockroaches running everywhere. What about the poor dog? This dog has to deal with all these cockroaches. How is this allowed? How is this fair to this dog? He probably hates all these roaches crawling all over him and crawling all over the floors. That's not fair to this guy. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comments, but I feel like this family is just a lost cause and we should probably save the dog. I wanna teach people about my roaches because because they're not monsters and they can be really cute and funny. Cockroaches are cute and funny, huh? That's weird, I've never heard a cockroach tell a joke before. Could you imagine being in this little girl's class when it's bring your pet to school day and she shows up with a thousand cockroaches? I would fucking cry. Also, I feel like cockroaches are a better defense than a guard dog. Any burglar that breaks into this house is running out with his tail between his legs. Could you imagine breaking in and seeing cockroaches everywhere? Well, I feel like this is the best time for me to tell my horror cockroach story. So when I was a little kid, I had a Fear Factor birthday party and my mom got me Madagascar hissing roaches. She put a hundred dollar bill in a jar but there were Madagascar hissing roaches all over the $100 bill. So everybody at the party had the chance of reaching in and getting the $100 bill, but the Madagascar hissing roaches, I guess, they latch on your skin and they hiss, like shh, on your skin. So nobody did it, no one got the $100, and the way to actually get the $100 was, I thought about this because I'm a genius, I put them in the freezer. Next thing you know, I waited a week. After about a week, they were frozen, and I shook them up, and they were all dead, and then I took the $100 bill. That's thousand level IQ. I uh, skipped a couple grades. <laughs> I'm brilliant. Now that I told this story, I'm actually curious about her cockroach collection. I'm wondering if she has any of those flying roaches from Florida. Okay, that's the weirdest thing ever because I just told this story. So she actually has Madagascar hissing roaches and she says that when she plays with them, they hiss at her, so she just hisses back. Sometimes they're too noisy, I will hiss at them. I don't know if this girl has the biggest balls I've ever seen or she's out of her mind psychotic. I don't know guys, the parents are a little too lenient. This kid's out of control. I don't know what's gonna happen later in life, but this is a weird situation. They like the dark better than the light. This is a boy doobie roach. You can see it has wings on its back. This is a girl and she does not have the wings. So with most kids, they'll show you their Pokemon card collection or Yu-Gi-Oh card, Magic card, whatever card collection. With this girl, it's cockroaches. This is my cockroach, it can fly. This is my cockroach that's pregnant. Are you serious? If this was my kid, you guys already know what I would do. Hey Siri, where's the nearest orphanage? Bye Felicia. This is a boy in Madagascar and this is a girl. And you can tell apart if you look closely on the boy, he has some bumps on his head and on the girl, she doesn't have any. So Shelby goes on to give us a class presentation on cockroaches. Are you guys interested? Well, here's what she has to say. She says that the cockroaches have an exoskeleton and when they're shedding their exoskeleton, they turn white for a little bit, then they get their original color back. She also says that cockroaches do not bite or harm you, but they do get stinky at times. Based on for my favorite roach, her name was Black. And I named her Blackie because she was completely black. Aw, so Shelby's favorite cockroach, Blackie, died, and it's very tragic. She wrote on the tombstone that she was nice, and I would just like to say good. I hope every single cockroach in the world dies. This is up, and these parents should be ashamed of themselves, and this kid may be Child Protective Services. I'm just saying, maybe we need to take this kid away to some kind of parents that have a backbone and be like, yo, this is weird as f**k. You shouldn't have cockroaches as pets. Just an idea. Let me know what you guys think. Well, now that we met Cockroach Girl, why don't we look at Reese, the king of fans. And I'm the king of the fans! This is Reese, he's 11 years old and he collects fans. And when he found out that he was gonna be on TV, he put on his best suit for the occasion. Nothing wrong with looking your best to be on TV. I respect the drip. Reese seems like a theater kid waiting to happen, but he put on his best suit for the occasion, so kid might be going places. And from the looks of it, it looks like Reese has more fans than I do. <laughs> I'll show myself out. I thought it was kind of a strange thing to collect. That's a weird thing to collect. The parents are always weird too. When the kids are weird, the parents are weird. I would love to see the Your Wet Sock data on that because I feel like there's a correlation there, bud. So Reese is from North Fondue Lock, Wisconsin. I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong, but it really doesn't matter. And his goal is to obtain Galaxy by Lasco box fan. Kid's really shooting for the stars here. Reese seems like the kid that everybody bullies in high school, but later in life becomes really successful by developing a new type of fan that no one else thought about it because he was that obsessed about fans and now he's multi-million. 
millionaire. Or that could not be the case, but that's what I think is gonna happen because there's been similar kits to this, but if you're so obsessed about something and you're creative and you think about a different way to do something that no one else has thought about, hey man, maybe you can make a shit ton of money doing it. So pop off, good for him. I think in a couple years, Reese is gonna type in OnlyFans and be like, damn it, dude, there's porn on here. I was trying to look up some fans, dude. I thought it was about fans for my collection, but it's just a bunch of girls asking for money and then you got Bella Thorne being a scammer. So Reese says he has over 200 fans and then he starts showing off all his fans and he says, this is a Holmes pedestal fan. I got table fans and I got standing fans and I got only fans and I got all the fans. Reese is a natural salesman because he really loves the product that he is selling us. He actually says that this is the perfect example of a box fan treated well and then he goes on to play the box fan on low speed. We have a quiet. It's beautiful. It's like a bird humming. I'll be honest, Reese, I'm currently not in the fan market, but that being said, you're so passionate about the product you're selling, I would buy a fan from this kid, 100%. Reese then shows his passive fans and he says, well, at first you think it's a footstool, but then if you look closely, there's a motor and a blade and it's a fan. Well, I always had a rule about not collecting ceiling fans. Reese's dad says he always had a rule about not collecting ceiling fans, but contradictory to the father's words, Reese actually shows us his wide collection of ceiling fans. So it turns out what we have here is another case of a father without a sack of balls that lets his kid dictate whatever happens in the household. I have an honest question, guys. Do kids not get the belt anymore? I don't know about you guys, but when I acted out or I wasn't doing any weird stuff that my parents didn't agree with, I didn't respect my parents' authority, I got the belt and I feel like that was pretty normalized. I don't want to be like a back in my day person, but to be honest, I feel like these days kids walk all over their parents. They tell their moms to shut up. There's no respect for the parents in the household. I don't know about you guys, but I miss the good old days when kids were disciplined and they didn't collect fans and cockroaches. Maybe that's just me though. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. When will it stop? My prescription to Reese is to stop collecting fans and start collecting Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh cards because they go up in value and you can always sell them to Logan Paul and make a couple million, buddy. Let's be honest, guys. The Pokemon card collecting industry, through the roof. The fan collecting industry, yeah, I don't think many people are collecting vintage fans. So Reese says he is somewhat obsessed with fans and then he is looking at a fan and he says, yes, it is quite beautiful how they look. I'll be honest, there's a lot of conviction in what Reese is saying and you can tell that he really believes that fans are the most beautiful thing in the world. And you know what, it's got me second guessing my assessment of fans. I feel like the next time I'm gonna look at a fan, I'm gonna be like, Huh, you know, Reese is right. That fan looks pretty good. So Reese said he started collecting fans when he was three and he's still collecting fans and he's currently 11. So that's eight years of collecting fans and he is still just as obsessed with fans as he was when he started when he was three. I'm not gonna lie guys, this kid seems pretty intelligent. I don't know about you all, but when I was three years old, I'm pretty sure I was playing with my action figures and drooling on my dick. I definitely wasn't collecting anything. So for him to be collecting things and start collecting at three, I feel like that shows a lot of promise. One thing's for sure, Reese definitely has more fans than T-Series does. Ah! In all seriousness, Reese speaks with a lot of charisma. He's a natural salesman, especially when he's selling somebody a fan or talking about fans because it's his passion. I wish him all the success in the world. I wouldn't be surprised if this kid grows up, sees something that we don't see and invents a new kind of fan and makes multiple millions of dollars. I wouldn't be surprised because these are the kind of kids that do it, that obsess over something and make something better. You know, so I wish him all the best. I'm sure the power bill is insane in that house if he has all the fans working all the time. So, hey, the dad looks like Bill Gates, but I don't think he's got the Bill Gates money. So best of luck to this family. Now let's move on to another kid with a strange addiction. Let's look at that kid that's obsessed with collecting vacuums. Honestly, I feel like this kid's obsession with vacuums is more useful than Reese's obsession with fans because when your kid's obsessed with vacuums, I feel like your floors are always clean. So this is like a huge flash for the parents. So his parents reveal that their son wakes up and vacuums the entire house and then when he comes back from school, he vacuums the entire house again. So their house is getting vacuumed twice per day. It makes me feel kind of annoyed because there's always a vacuum running around the house and I can't really concentrate on what I want to do. I agree with the sister here. That would actually really annoy me if my sibling was constantly vacuuming because I find the noise the vacuum produces incredibly cringe and just disruptive. So after Logan's done vacuuming his house, he follows his mom and dad to their places of work. His mother's a hairdresser and his dad is a firefighter so he goes to both places and vacuums the entire place. Logan's father said he loves it because it feels like his son is his own personal maid and I feel like, I don't know if they're paying their kid, but they probably should or should they not because it's their kid and this is his hobby. I don't know how I feel about this. I keep on vacuuming until it's all done and then I repeat every day. Sibley is a small town. Everyone knows everyone and they may not know us directly, but they'll be like, hey, 
Your son's the vacuum kid. So Logan is notorious around his city for being the vacuum kid and people actually give him vacuums to play with or if a vacuum's broken, they'll just hand it to him in order to hold on to it. And this kid actually repairs the vacuums and hands it back to him and they're like, oh my God, I wasn't expecting that. I just handed you the vacuum, not thinking that you would repair it and give it back to me. So yeah, he's now a vacuum repair man. So that's pretty lit. I think it's interesting he's so fascinated with vacuums. I just hope this kid is getting paid for his time. Like he should be charging people to repair their vacuums or charging people to vacuum an entire place or a hair salon. Like I feel like his parents at least, they should give him some kind of allowance. Well, what do you know? Logan actually opened up a business, Logan's Vacuum Repair, and he's now charging people to fix their vacuums. And he says that he feels like a detective. And when he fixes the vacuum, he solves the mystery. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm all about it, man. You know, young entrepreneur. That's what I like to see, man. Capitalism is so lit it should be okay thank you every time i fix a vacuum cleaner i feel like a detective trying to find out a crime every other kid's addicted to video games meanwhile logan is addicted to vacuums kids at school are like hey you have an xbox or ps4 he's like nah dude vacuum by the way if your vacuum's broken you should come by my shop logan's vacuum repairs and i'll repair your vacuum for you no problem this is a nice transition. Since we were talking about video games, let's talk about the mom that said her 12 year old is addicted to violent video games on Dr. Phil. So the scene opens up and the mother says, my son is addicted and obsessed with violent video games. Welcome to parenting any 12 year old in America. Like what, what are you saying to me right now? Every kid plays video games these days. The mother goes on to say that he plays where he wants, when he wants, for as long as he wants, and usually he doesn't eat dinner with them or anything, but he will say from his room, bring me food, peasant. I find kind of funny. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but if I said that to my parents, I would get my ass beat. Uh, you know, the belt, we talked about this before. Kids aren't getting the belt these days. It's a thing. The mother says the two games that her son really enjoys to play is Grand Theft Auto and Fortnite. And same here, dude, big fan of Fortnite. Uh, definitely got off season six though, because it just got too competitive. Like kids are too good now and I just can't compete. It's kind of like that vine where it's like, I can't compete, I can't compete. That's how I feel when I play Fortnite now against a bunch of kiddos. And there's nothing worse than getting disrespected on Fortnite and then have someone like dance in your face after they kill you. It's like, you wanna break your monitor. The mother goes on to say that she doesn't approve of her son playing Grand Theft Auto because it's a very violent game and it's very demeaning to women. For this point, let me know what you guys think about this in the comments, but I personally don't think that Grand Theft Auto as a game is demeaning towards women, but you can demean women in the game. I mean, you can do whatever you want in the game. Like you can shoot somebody in the face, you can like kind of do whatever you want. That's the whole appealing factor to Grand Theft Auto. But uh, yeah, I don't think the game itself is demeaning to women. I think your son is demeaning women in the game, possibly. Like I could see that, but at the same time, it's like, not real life, it's a game. His aunt says, when my nephew is playing the game, he's very disrespectful to the people that he's playing the game with. So trash talking is basically what she's saying. So in a very Karen roundabout way, she's calling out her nephew for trash talking, which is normal, any gamer trash talks. His mom and aunt are bringing a lot of Karen energy into this. I don't wanna be one of those back in my day guys, but back in my day when I was playing like competitive video games, like game battles for Modern Warfare 1 and 2, trash talk was like peak at that point. I talk so much shit to people and I feel like it just made me mentally stronger or able to like dish it back. If like I was insulted, I would insult them back. And it just made me stronger. Like I don't think trash talk is a bad thing. I mean, people trash talk, like professional athletes trash talk all the time. If you zoom in on everybody in the NFL, everybody's trash talking back and forth. You have a good play, you talk a little shit. It's like very normal to do. I feel like it's worse if you're sheltered and you don't trash talk and then you encounter trash talking because you just don't know what to say or you don't have a clap back and then you think about it for longer. You know what I mean? The mother goes on to say that the language he uses is sometimes with adults and it is just so vulgar. When the mother tells her son to stop using that language, he'll tell her to shut the f up. And then the aunt chimes in that he'll turn over furniture, he breaks dishes. Hey, here's a wild idea for both of you guys. Why don't you discipline the kid? Why don't you send him off to military school? Or just, you know, give him the belt. I mean, it worked for my entire generation. So I don't really see what the problem is here. I feel like you guys aren't disciplining the kid. And then you're like, oh my God, what do we do? Oh no, he's talking to us terrible. Well then, dude, give him the belt and he'll learn his lesson. Like, I just don't understand why people don't discipline their kids in this era. Like, it, it's weird. You guys are raising a bunch of pussies. The mother says these violent games has actually desensitized him from matters of life and death and now he gets bullied in school and she's afraid that he's going to
going to become a school shooter. I mean, you're reaching pretty far. You know what I mean? Like this is where she's at. This is where she should be. She's really reaching with that statement. A couple things. So first of all, your kid is probably getting bullied because you don't discipline him and you let him act out and he thinks that he can talk however he wants. And he probably said a bunch of shit to the kid he shouldn't have said something to because the kid they said something to probably has older brothers and he probably absolutely clobbered your kid. And you know what? Rightfully so. I feel like if you discipline your kid, maybe it would be a different outcome. Well, look at that time, gents. We're running out of time for this video. So we are gonna be making an entire video on this kid, on the situation on Dr. Phil. His name is the Fortnite kid. He's very notorious. And we are gonna be making an entire video on that. So stay tuned because that'll come out very, very soon, my friends. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Comment below, subscribe. Let's be friends, let's be friends. Follow me on Twitch and on Instagram right now.